That's a bad sign. <laughs> Windows updates, yay! Here is a fifth generation iPod Touch. Also FYI, it's not water resistant. Like I'll throw an iPad here, but an iPad is just a bigger iPhone. Now I knew it was gonna be small, but when it ships in a box this small, it really puts into perspective how small this guy is actually gonna be, yes. This is finally gonna be a replacement for my 12 inch MacBook and my Surface Go 3. Two, small footprint, very lightweight, fanless computers. Except these guys are underpowered dual cores and this one has an eight core or something of other Snapdragon thingamajig. I was hoping for a smaller device. This is like a 10.5 inch. Well, this guy is a 12 inch. Now, unlike your iPads and your Android tablets, these guys, everybody here is running a full desktop operating system. The Surface got Windows 11, the Mac's got Mac OS. So finally, it's like a more powerful replacement to like the Surface Go, sort of. It's bigger than the Surface Go. It's about the size of a 12 inch MacBook. So it's got a Snapdragon X plus eight core CPU, Orion based cores, but it's the lowest one in the tier with the lowest clock speed. It does have 16 gigabytes of RAM standard, but it also means 16 gigs of RAM, take it or leave it. Oh, you want the fun colors like the ocean blue and the violet violet? You have to step up to the 899 512 variant. If you want the 799, you get the gray plain like this weather platinum. So 8099, that's still misleading. It's a surface, it's not complete without its type cover. So that's another 149 you have to add. But guess what? This guy doesn't include the power brick. You can tell because the box is much smaller this time. That's a bad sign. <laughs> Means it doesn't have the power brick. At least the box is easier to open. It comes to the power cord and literally that's it. This part of the box is empty. There's nothing in here. This is just paperwork. So add another like 50 bucks. Really, this is an $1,100 machine. Ugh, it's glossy. Also, once more accessories become available for this, one of the first things I highly recommend getting is a matte screen protector. So let's go ahead and set up Windows. Oh wait, my keyboard's not yet here. So because of the type cover being sold separately, shipped separately, and it's not yet here, ThinkPad. So how to properly set up Windows 10? First you need to do Shift F10. Shift F10. And then you type OBE backslash bypass NRO. Unless you're watching this in the future and this doesn't work anymore, so there's gonna be a different command at this point because it's a fucking game of whack-a-mole. Also, the glossiness of this is annoying. There's no anti-reflective coding or anything like that. This is important. Choose I don't have internet. Type in a local account name. And I typically leave location and find my device enabled, but everything else, shush. And then more waiting. The next thing you have to disable is device encryption because it enables encryption by default. Next, we have to go install apps and then we have to uninstall bloatware like this thing. Uninstall OneDrive if you're not using it. Uninstall Teams, uninstall, uninstall. Suggestions, shut that off. Start menu, more pins. Widgets, f*** that shit. Not my touch. No picture, no fun facts. No, no, no. Now we're connected to the internet. We can do Windows updates. Yay! And that's how you set up Windows 11. So one of the biggest concerns I had when the 12 inch surface was announced was size. This is a Peak Design 6 liter. This is what I always take at this point. Surface Go fits in here perfectly fine. Put in the type cover, no big deal. The 12 inch MacBook on the other hand is one a bit of a, quite a piece. It just barely fits. But there we go, it fits. And that's the entire laptop. 12 inch surface. A bit of a squeeze. That's less of a squeeze than the MacBook. The MacBook, you really gotta heave it in there. But again, the type cover was shipped separately. So I'm gonna have to find out when it arrives. Right, there's also recall. Requires setup, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so me turning off encryption made recall crippled. Good. 
Also, here's some display settings that needs to be changed as well. Display, adaptive color, off. Scaling, I bumped it up to 175%. And then advanced display. This is a 90 hertz display, but it was defaulted to 60. Balanced. Balanced. But honestly, even in power efficiency, this thing is super snappy. So if you want to leave it in power efficiency, it's probably fine. So the biggest difference between the Surface Go 3 and the 12-inch Surface is this is way faster. That's honestly the biggest difference. Like, let's go ahead and open up Spotify. It's not even a contest anymore. Like, day-to-day -day usage. This doesn't skip a beat. All right, I kid you. Yeah, 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 the biggest difference between these two is size. Now, despite this one being a little bit smaller, being thinner, lighter, it doesn't have a cellular option. So it's not a Surface Go replacement, but it doesn't replace a 13-inch Surface Pro. So it's a weird in-between. If you look at the packaging, it says first gen or something like that. So it's, a, it's its own line. It's fanless and thin like a Surface Go, but it has a fairly big footprint. Storage is also interesting. It's UFS. So it's the same storage as the, the smart, high-end smartphones, like this one I'm using as a microphone right now. Here is a fifth generation iPod Touch. This thing is very thin, but it has a headphone jack. This is thicker. And it also doesn't have a headphone jack. And most dongles don't have a headphone jack. It's got HDMI, three Type A ports, Ethernet, Type C pass through, but they can also do data and an SD card and a microSD card slot. You know what's missing? A headphone jack. Also, FYI, it's not water resistant. Now, the blue in the 13-inch Pro is more blue. The one, it, the ocean one, the one I have, is more this. So, despite the speaker being more bassy, it's not gonna be like outdoor filling. So, you can't really use it in the park, though. Actually, no, don't use it in the park. Don't be one of those people.
one thing that's really gonna annoy me for the foreseeable ownership of this device is its size. I've seen other reviews saying that, oh, it's a smaller surface, it's a cuter surface. It's not as cute as this. This is noticeably lighter, noticeably smaller. I can hold it from one side and it's like, eh, no big deal, hold it like that, no big deal. This one, I hold it on one side and mm, like the, the half is noticeable. It's a bit more unwieldy, a little bit more unwieldy. Like, and then holding it tablet wise, like, whoa, that is big compared to this one, which is more iPad sized. Now I'm already seeing some written reviews comparing this to the Pro and like, oh, just get the Pro. Like you get more value for your money. It's faster and you know, accessories already exist. None of that would happen if just they made it smaller. Make it an 11 inch device. Now size wise, this is more like my 12 inch MacBook. It really is. Like the size of these guys is a lot more comparable. Like the keyboard size is very similar, almost the same. The screen size is, well, the same. 12 inch MacBook, 12 inch surface. And the footprint of the 12 inch MacBook is only, it's only a little bit bigger. But thickness wise, remember, this is a full laptop. It's not a convertible or anything. It's got this wedge design, so it actually gets thinner. Well, this one is a two-in-one, so the keyboard and the computer itself are two separate things. I wouldn't be commenting about its thickness and oh, it's like just basically the size of a laptop if they just made it small. Once the footprint is very small, go ahead, make it thicker, no problem. Because if you don't mind it being a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, there's a lot, and I mean a lot of choices for like 13 inch laptops. Hell, this thing is a bit of competition with the 13 inch Pro. Meanwhile, in the 11 inch category, what do we have? A Surface Go 4 with the N200 Intel CPU, eight gigs of RAM, take it or leave it. Or, you know, get an 11 inch iPad. Or get an Android tablet, whatever Samsung makes at this point, I lost track. I eventually did buy it because it is like, a middle ground between these two guys should have been smaller should have been smaller i could see a reason why microsoft chose like a 12 inch size so that the keyboard is not cramped like on the go because with this one it's like typing on a netbook which has a charm to it like it's cute it's small but I tend to mistype a little more often. So the keyboard on this is perfectly normal. Soft, quiet, tactile keys, um, little to no stab noise. Sounds very poppy. I actually prefer this flatter design where it doesn't angle up like this one. Because most of the time when I use this, I have to lower the keyboard flat anyway. The only keys I can see different is, well, there's a dedicated lock switch on the keyboard itself. And... Okay, reprogramming that stupid, stupid key. So the tool you need is power toys there is an arm 64 version of it grab that input output keyboard manager and then it's actually not remap a key it's actually remap a shortcut because the stupid key is windows left shift left f23 whatever the fuck that is. and then yeah you just reprogram that so that it does right control or anything really. So now pressing that key is now just regular old control. And then finally the touchpad MacBook tier in the accuracy and responsiveness. But it doesn't have that cold and ultra slippery feel you get on like a glass touchpad, which is weird because the packaging for this keyboard says 
it is a glass touchpad but I had my doubts so I grabbed my blade scored a little bit at the corner and yep it is digging into the material which is is it actually glass because if you take the blade and put it to a MacBook glass touchpad like nothing it's not digging in at all now I can do the same thing with the Surface Go's touchpad nothing it's not digging in it's not scratching anything but this one is like this one like scratches a little corner and like ooh. so I don't know it maybe it's some sort of coating on top of glass it feels like a PTFE plastic touchpad on like what you get on the Surface Go laptop but in the end of the day this guy is right in the middle it's the size of a 12 inch macbook the footprint of a 12 inch macbook it's a two-in-one like the surface go uh, all of them have like fairly sharp ips screens like i'll throw an ipad here but an ipad is just a bigger iphone so in the end we have come full circle what we have here are fanless small footprint lightweight premium computers with full fat desktop operating systems it's again it's an interesting niche and there's not a lot out there there's plenty of like ios and android options but not so much for your full desktop os apple hasn't refreshed this at all this is a 2017 model and this is the latest one and then if you want to replace this and you want to stick to apple you have two choices a 13 inch macbook air which still impressively thin incredibly powerful well like it's nice and everything but the it's footprint wise is much bigger it's noticeably heavier or you get an ipad which runs ipad os and i think that's the conclusion for this there's not a lot of choice in this weird little niche that i somehow ended up with liker's gonna like haters gonna hate but then why are you gonna dislike i am literally outdoors right now in the rain and people are still going through people are still running in the rain subscribe for more i, I don't know if we're gonna get more of this i wanted to shoot outside but it's start but then the forecast is rainy all day So yeah, here's my setup as uh, like Airbnb. It's the last day of LTX, and right now I am just offloading footage from the SD card from the HC V720, while at the same time watching Ludwig's reaction to jet lag. FYI, I did watch jet lag on Nebula, so they 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 got the revenue. Oh hi! <laughs> How's it going? Hey! <laughs> Okay. Oh, I hope I didn't kill it. I did cover it with that. <laughs> 